Hi everyone, Bird here with the latest Citizen vlog, it's a city present and we've had a, a few of these uh, sort of disgruntled ones, it's quite an important one today isn't it, we're going to have a look back at the game at the bridge last night, it's on the 25th of June 2020, it was an 8.15 kick off wasn't it, Chelsea versus Manchester City, a lot on the line wasn't there this game last night and uh, I think I sort of, sort of feel a bit down, a bit down last night. Not too bad today now. I've, I've been in work for a little bit, got home from work. So uh, we do have one Liverpool fan at work who is pretty miserable most of the time, to be honest with you. But he had a bit of a smile on his face this morning. But uh, hey, there you go. Only to be expected. At least at least he doesn't ram it down our throat because he never speaks, basically. But there you go. He says... Uh, he is quite miserable sometimes. Actually, a couple of the ladies there comment that he said hello today, which he doesn't usually do. I said, oh, well, I know the reason why. Anyway, please, thanks for joining. If you're new to the Citizen channel, Citizen City Presence, Citizen City Pass, please push that all subscribe on. That'd be fantastic. Tell your friends about this little little thing that's... Uh, we've got a quite a few subscribers now. It's growing gradually, but... Uh, the more the merrier. Tell your friends and please push that notification button so when you you know when things are coming out I'll have a quick I'll have a quick round up later of what's what's on the horizon. Right, let's have a look at the Chelsea City game then. At Stamford Bridge. Well I got nine nine right of the eleven. I predicted my eleven for the game, although I must admit there was one of them I, if I thought a bit longer about it I wouldn't have I would have probably uh, put Gundogan in the start in anyway, so I totally miss Gundogan and I don't know Pep's his go to player in sort of the bigger game. So uh, I got nine right anyway, allowing allowing for that. So that wasn't too bad, was it? The team yeah, I mean, he went strong. I thought he'd go strong. I thought he was going to play a, a slightly weaker team against Newcastle. Although after this last night, who knows? Who knows what will happen on the Sunday against Newcastle? Uh, Edison, Walker, Laporte, Ferner, Fernandinho, Mendy, Gundogan, Rodri, Mares, KDB, Bernardo and Sterling. And on the bench, some young faces. I believe uh, Stones is still injured. Uh, Phil Foden had picked up a knock, so he's, he's out injured as well. And obviously Aguero's out injured. Uh, subs, Carson, Jesus, Zinchenko, Sane, Silva, Otamendi, Doyle, how Taylor Howard Bellis and a guy called Palmer and I just did did tweet that I thought I was surprised that Roger Palmer was making a comeback. I thought we were getting a bit desperate, but I've been reliably informed it's a young man called Cole Palmer. So great, great for him to see him on the bench anyway and get a bit bit of experience, wasn't it, on the bench? So shall we talk about the game? Yeah, shall we talk about the game? The good, the bad, and the ugly. I've got a couple of uglies here, uh, which is unfortunate. I don't like to see uglies on this, but. Uh, yeah, I, d I did say it would be a, a stiff challenge against Chelsea, and it, and it certainly proved so. I think, you know, as I said, apart from City entertainment wise, you know, they are they are up there with City almost, and uh, their frailties are in defence similar to ours, which obviously theirs didn't show last night, and ours did. But there you go. Anyway, the first few minutes, it's sort of uh, we, we looked up for it, didn't we? we passed pretty well. Uh, we seemed to be Sterling and Mendy sort of swapping and changing on the left hand side, and uh, you had Mares on the right. I think Bernardo Silva was playing the false nine, which he doesn't like playing apparently, but hey, Pep, Pep knows best, doesn't it? But uh, I had the feeling it was all going to be interchangeable that central position with KDB, etc. And uh, obviously, other, other swapping around. So I think that's what it was. I mean, the first real chance came from a bit of a Chelsea error, actually, on 14 minutes, where there was a little mix up and the ball ended up in the air. And I think Bernardo Silva, he'd been a bit tall, he'd been edging Jekko, he might have been able to do something, but uh, he couldn't really get it down and make anything of it. And it was a bit bit of a mistake by Chelsea, which uh, they didn't make many last night. I mean, not like, not like some other teams, but it didn't quite fall for Bernardo. So that sort of passed. Uh, the next really good thing was uh, uh, 17 minutes. It sort of came from nowhere, whipped in cross, wasn't it, with a Fernandinho header, which basically, if it had been perhaps either side of the goalie, it might have struggled, but it was sort of at him and at a good height. So any half-decent goalkeeper or any keeper of any, any quality, even me, uh, would probably tip that over the bar without too many problems. So that was 17 minutes. Uh, say so it wasn't. It wasn't. There's was a lot of a lot of possession, wasn't there? Wasn't much action. Uh, Twenty six minutes for we saw a couple of little moves from Chelsea, but we saw a really good move by Chelsea. I think Barkley was involved in it, and it it seemed to sort of um, 
sort of pinball a little bit like it, they had another one later on you know was obviously mass panic actually two or three chances where it seemed to be mass panic in the city in the city defense to be honest with you but uh Fern, fernandino blocked a sort of barkley shot he looked really up for it last night barkley I'm, I'm quite impressed with barkley last night i'm not his biggest fan but he played really well yeah so they had a good chance of 26 minutes but uh Ferner put it you know put his body on the line there for us so that was pretty good Again on 31 minutes, this is another pinballing thing where it went from one side to the other and uh, I think Giroud was involved etc and it ended up uh, obviously a, a Barkley inspired chaos around the City goal there and again um, it led to a, a Chelsea corner after a pinball and blockages etc and uh, Edison had to do quite a good save from a, from a header from a corner and again, again it was sort of comfortable for a, an okay goalkeeper but that was the, so you saw sort of Chelsea coming into it more on the, on the half hour hour mark and um, which led to obviously 35 minutes when I, I put this is an ugly I mean this is just absolutely pathetic I mean I my, my, I chatted to my lad about it and he, he said he, he was fairly sure Mendy and Gundogan and Gundogan was telling Mendy to, to sort of keep his distance sort of thing because I think they were having a having a little chat in the middle of the pitch I don't know what was going on it was from our we were up front we were attacking it was no big deal was it a free kick or a corner and then it came out and I, I have no idea what Mendy and uh, Gundogan are doing. Uh, someone did comment this morning that why why do we leave Kyle War why do we have Kyle o Walker up for corners and free kicks like that? I mean his pace would be wonderful and that's what we needed yesterday, wasn't it? I mean uh, Mendy passed it into no man's land and Pulisic took advantage. But Mendy had chance. I mean Mendy had chance to get back. He was there. He was with him and he just uh, Pulisic. He just paused and so he was just sold himself. And I mean. We'll go on more about Mendy and the talking points later, but I mean, and there's no way Gundogan's getting back. I mean, I can beat him in a in a 50 metre sprint. To be honest with you, he's, he's absolutely useless at speed. So there's no way he was going back. All credit to Pul Pulisic. I don't think Edison did anything wrong. He narrowed the angle enough, and uh, Pulisic was obviously calm and, and stuck it away. That was on 35 minutes. So it was uh, a little bit depressing, but not the end of the world, was it? At 37 minutes, a KDB three kick. Mares struck a great shot, but it, it was an ideal angle for him, wasn't it? On the left hand side, it was sort of curling, but obviously it was curling up over the bar, unfortunately. So uh, that was sort of a, the closest we'd come, even though we'd had a lot of possession. We hadn't really created much in front of goal, apart from that Bernardo sort of half chance. Uh, 42 minutes, another good run by Mendy, making up a little bit, trying to make up for his error, perhaps, I don't know. But um, obviously Mendy with his with his uh, clown boots on went running up that left hand side and uh, got whipped a ball in a right across the six yard box. But we don't have strikers, do we? Um, so you know that's gonna whip across the box, isn't it? I mean we we, we sort of struggled with one and a half strikers for a couple of years, and now now that Aguero's not with us again, we you know you, we haven't really got a striker. We, even Jesus was on the bench, so. We don't have people who can make those runs into the six-yard box. And, I mean, I, I know we do score goals and we score a lot of goals from midfield and Pep seems quite happy with that. But we, we've got to get people in that box. We've got to get bodies in the box and it just didn't happen. So, yeah, that was half-time, 1-0. There wasn't much else to uh, worry the scorekeeper, to be honest with you. Uh, second half, um, we had a Mendy Rose Z effort on about 52 minutes. Um, we had KDB playing his passes and almost it in the corner flag with a cross field pass so even KDB was out of sorts although the only only time we looked dangerous was perhaps when KDB was getting involved uh, 54 minutes very early 54 minutes uh, Pep's making some early substitutions uh, at the moment uh, that's I mean it's usually 60 minutes plus before he does it obviously Bernardo and Rodri came off and David Silva and Jesus came on to try and uh, change things a little bit and I don't think whether it had a big change but we, within, the, within the minute we'd scored we'd, equal, we'd actually equalised uh, again Mares some great play by Mares again he had a, quite a good game last night I thought Mares is one of our better players uh, and again he jinked and won the, won the free kick on the but what a free won the free kick on the edge and obviously uh, KDB fantastic capper in goals it capper or capper I'm not sure what he is He's, I don't know what he is when he stays on the pitch he doesn't walk you know he refuses to walk off at the best of times does he but he stayed on his line and moved to his right and sort of give up on it and we just I mean it was so went so high as well over the wall I mean it wasn't just you know it was a good what. 10, 15 feet over the wall from KDB. He got it up and down, but obviously it was quite a, a way out. So, yeah, the Kepper or Kappa give up on it anyway. So, great goal. Again, perhaps 
was it more? I mean, you know, Chelsea had had the best chances up to up to then. I mean, you know, he had a couple of scra- a couple of scrambles, so we perhaps weren't really worthy of that uh, of equaliser. But that doesn't mean anything, does it? You don't always get what you deserve, do you? Fifty six minutes, we could have done in two one, couldn't we? We could have been two one up. A fantastic break, <sighs> absolutely superb from the back. Sterling through. Mares to his right, just play it. I mean, remember, remember, Mister us slagging off a certain Tottenham player for not passing it to Mister Sterling in the for England in the World Cup. I mean, Sterling, all he had to do was put it to his right. Mares had an open net, but no, he took. All right, naturally, if it, that had been Aguero, yeah, fair enough, because Aguero's instinct is to score. But Sterling obviously can't hit a barn door sometimes. So, I mean, perhaps that goal he scored in the last games obviously livened him up a bit. But uh, please, you know, we walk it into the goal sometimes. But when we, when we need that pass, we don't do it. He shot, and yeah, he was a bit unlucky. But you know, he had the, just the goalie to beat, and it hit the hit the post, and it was it was cleared. So we missed it. That was fifty six minutes. Uh, so yeah, he should have passed Tamares in my opinion. Uh, another substitute then on 58 minutes, uh, Zinchenko came on for Mendy. Uh, he dragged it. I think he had a hook, didn't he, and dragged Mendy off. Um, 61 minutes. Well, obviously we nearly lost it. With, with, I think it's mentioned in the player ratings by um, Simon Bukowski as well. I mean, a, a poor clearance by Edison and uh, Mason Mount should have done a lot better, but he actually put it wide, so that saved us a little bit. Uh, 72 again Chelsea were in it was sort of you know they looked so dangerous on the break we had the walker on the line didn't we again it's similar to the to, similar to the Wembley Stadium thing where he literally just stopped the I mean most defenders would have actually not cleared that you know stopped it on the line but I think it's Ferner was it who ran behind him but uh, obviously they had a great you know they, they, it was it was a goal I mean I, I, I thought it was a goal simply but Walker fantastic stopped it on the line and obviously it was cleared but uh, fantastic Walker again one of our better players last night but it was all it's all going wrong wasn't it then we had another substitute Otamendi for Laporte obviously he's thinking what's he thinking with Laporte is he thinking about Newcastle is, was he carrying injured was he, was he injured I'm not too sure Otamendi for Laporte, uh, but very soon after again, confusion and chaos in the City defence again. Ha- pinball, pinball stuff, how it didn't go in. Well, it didn't go in because uh, Mr Fern- Fernandino handballed it. So, I mean, you know, it's absolutely chaotic in the City defence. We, the defence last night was was pretty abysmal. Did they get any support from midfield? Probably not, so you can't really blame them as such but uh, yeah I mean I, I wasn't sure I was watching on a small screen I wasn't it wasn't very clear to me but then obviously on the replay and it, it was a clear handball by Fern you could see his face and Fern has got previous hasn't he for doing things and getting sent off and um, should he have lost, lost, let it go in would it have made a difference I don't know we played okay with 10 men when he went off but yeah I mean uh, super penalty by William I would have gone the right way for that again. I would have chose that way, but it was quite so well placed. I don't think I would have reached that. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have got that William penalty superb, but Edison went the wrong way anyway. So, uh, seventy-seven minutes. It's two one to Chelsea, and pretty much all over, isn't it? With Teddy, even though we did again, I still have um, lots and lots of possession. The best chance came to Chelsea. Um, they had a superb save. I thought it shot wide initially, but Edison made a fantastic save in the ninety-second minute. Or it would have been an even more embarrassing 3-1. So, yeah, I mean, the match stats, I mean, I think the match stats says it all, really. Possession for Chelsea, 35%, 65% for City. Fifth but here, yeah, look at the shots. Chelsea, 15 shots, 10 on target. Not often we get beaten by a team. 11 shots for City, 2 on target. That just showed, even though we had all that possession, they made it count. Chelsea made it count. We didn't again, once again. Um, corners, 5 for Chelsea, 7 for City. I'll mention the corners later again uh, when I do my little roundup. Um, fouls, 13 by Chelsea, 3 by City. So, I mean, usually we're, we're higher than the opposition, aren't we? So, obviously that was another defeat. That's our, that's our 60 feet away. So, we played 16 games, won 9, drawn 1 and lost 6. I mean, it just, just is, is no good, is it? It's absolutely no, not good enough. I'm just going to go through the player ratings before we summarise the thing and uh, sort of a couple of talking points in the game. Right, so this is Mr Simon Bukowski again. I think Stuart Brennan's give up on doing player ratings now. Right, so, <coughs> excuse me. 
Start with Edison. Made a good save from a corner in the first half, but nearly gifted Chelsea a second goal with a rare lax pass out from the back. His long balls over the top certainly seem more of a deliberate strategy since the restart. Yeah, they didn't sort of work last night, though, did they, unfortunately? He's give Edison a six. Yeah, I won't disagree. Six is my basic. I don't think he could do much else, and he was okay. He made that one error, but he didn't do anything to deserve less than a six. Walker, another solid performance. He's made the right back spot his own unique role it may make more sense to keep him back for corners though given it was as i said there given his pace and relative lack of attacking threat excellent clearance in the second half so he's given him a seven yeah i'll give walker 6.5 I, I thought yeah i mean i've nearly given him a seven but i'll give him a six point i'm gonna be mean today i'm not gonna give anyone really great marks today so 6.5 is one of my highest marks anyway i'll give walker 6.5 fernandino went close with a header that kepa did well to turn over Although his lack of pace was exposed by Pulisic in the goal mouth scramble in the second half and was then sent off for handball. So he's given Fernandino just a five. I think that's a bit unfair. I've given Ferner a six. So I think he was just exposed too much. I think that's a problem with Ferner. So I'm going to give him the basic six. I'm not going to give him, I think that's a bit mean on Fernandino. Let me know what you think. Laporte, City are building Laporte such his best time for the Champions League. Will be good enough for that. <laughs> That's another story. That was another decent performance where he carried out his duties well and could not be deemed culpable for the costly area. So just give Laporte 7. Yeah, I'm going to give him 6.5. I mean, he played okay. Um, I nearly give him a 6. But yeah, he did enough to get a 6.5. Mendy. Simon's row. Oh, Mendy, 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 Mendy. He had started well, combining well with Sterling down the left, has used his pace of defence. The erring judgment to give Pulisic a goal. The ball was compounded by diving in, though that was an unforgivable error. It certainly was. He'd given him four, which I don't usually go as low as four, but I'm going to agree with four. I mean, you could give him anywhere between... Uh, <sighs> One and five, couldn't you really? But yeah, four's a reasonable thing for Mendy. Again, a little talk on Mendy at the end. Rodri, a subdued performance when he never really seemed to be dominant in the middle. It's no surprise to see him one of the first taken off. So let's give Rodri a six. I mean, yeah, I was... I'll give him a six. I nearly give him a five point five, but I'll give him I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Gundogan, one of the better performers, despite the mix up for the goal. He was authoritative from the off and effective at both ends of the pitch, spraying passes wherever he wanted and made an important interception in his own box. Is he Gundogan seven? I mean, yeah. I mean, perhaps people saw more in Gundogan than I am. I'm only giving him a six. I'll give him the basic six. I'm not knocked him down anything for that confusion with uh, Mendy. I mean, at the end of the day, he's a seasoned professional, but. I just, I just, I just give, I give him a six. I just, I just, I'm, I'm not enamoured with it. Gundogan at the best of times. De Bruyne, so good. De Bruyne hasn't really done much until he swung an unstoppable free kick beyond Kepa to level the game and then played his part in a lighter, lightning counter that almost gave them the lead. Yeah, I mean, that was super. That was a sterling effort, wasn't it? KDB. He's give KDB a seven. I'm going to agree with seven as well. I can't disagree with that. Bernardo has made all secret of the facts. Uh, that his false nine is not his preferred role and it showed here he did not look comfortable in the position and City looked much more threatening once Jesus would come on. Yeah, I mean, he's, 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 opposite. he's not happy there. He's, he's given it a six. I mean, we're hoping for more from Bernardo, but game after game, he looks as though he might have started to turn it round before the break, but uh, he's, he's looking a bit, a bit, Average, isn't he, at the moment? I give him a six as well. Mares has become the goal to ball for Edison over the top behind the defence, and his touch was as glorious as ever. He's become more effective at making chances for his teammates. It was sharp to tee up Bernardo. See, so, yeah, he's becoming our Mares is becoming our goal to guy, isn't he? Which uh, is is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's I think it can be a bad thing actually if Mares is our goal to guy. He's given Mares a seven. I'll give him a six point five. I don't mind him contributing, but he's going to be our star man. I do worry a little bit about the overall thing. Sterling, another game at Stamford Bridge where Sterling struggled to affect things, albeit against one of the league's best fullbacks in As As Pilaqueta, whatever he's called. Unlucky to hit the balls after heading onto a Mares free ball. Yeah, he was unlucky, but he should have, he should have passed it. I mean, he gives Sterling six. I'm going to give him six. I'm not going to knock him down for the fact he should have passed it to Mares. And the substitute Jesus is given a six. City game more. He, Sitting more of a threat with him, and he's giving him a six. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. I'll give all the subs a six. I think uh, I think um, Simon has as well. Yeah, Silver is giving him a six. His presence seems to spur Sterling on on some line splitting passes. Zinchenko brought on to help attack, but end, ended up having to defend. So he's giving Zinchenko a six. I'll give Zinchenko a six. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, that to me just, just sort of summing up and some talking points. Um, that was a microcosm. We've been, I've been doing these vlogs now 
for you since August and you know the defeats of obviously the six away defeats if you discount something like Norwich where obviously it's just errors isn't it we're just it's a microcosm that game again for our season you know we've uh, we've just you know lots of possession and uh, not no striker on the pitch relying on our midfielders who not consistently doing it but you know so it is. It just sums up our our season, really. And I, I mean, we sort of give it up, didn't we? I, mean, I think I've, I've said on the thing we give this up with the with a whimper. We give up our title with a whimper. I mean, we'd lost the title earlier, but we've gone out with a whimper, and that's a disappointing element of this. I, I just, you know, all credit to to Chelsea, their Chelsea, Liverpool. They deserve it, but we've gone out with a whimper, haven't we? And we give Chelsea uh, the points there. I think we're still. Well ahead of Chelsea, obviously. I think we're uh, eight points ahead of Leicester and nine points ahead of Chelsea. So it's not a total disaster, but yeah, it's, it was a microcosm. I think the de defense needs sorting out. We need a striker. We've needed a striker for two or three years. He he's got away with it. I think we've got away with things, and I think we've been saying this in other vlogs as well over this season. We ha we have got away with certain things, but things have come back to haunt us with the Laporte and Stones not not stepping up to the mark and injury prone and forward wise we've struggled a bit you know Jesus has played some great stuff but he's not he's not an out and out striker and I think that it's showing I mean these games show you know where we play a good team we have struggled against good teams this season which we don't usually do we're quite good against the good teams uh, little talking points yeah Mendy uh, it, there was a lot about him thanking the fans and thanking the, the management and stuff for sticking with him and he's going to see the best of him and you know, I've City saved money now, Mendy's, Mendy's hitting his peak again. And he deals and puts in a, a, a four a number a four hour ten performance last last night. That that was dreadful. We know defending is not his not his great, but it's not what's the defending, is it? It's basic football there, the two of them, you know, Mendy and Gundo and it, all you have to do it's not not hard. He wasn't even under any pressure. I mean, that's just just a lack of concentration. Uh Fernandino. Again, we know what Fernandino is. He's he's playing, you know, he's he, he gives his heart and soul, and obviously he'll miss he'll miss a game, will he now? Just one game because it wasn't, uh, you know, a, a dangerous play, was it? Sending off, so I think he misses one game. But Ferner always does it, and say it's coming to the end of Ferner, aren't we? Uh, so there you go, Aguero. Uh, you know, even if we see him for the Champions League, he's not he's not going to be. As I said last time, he's, he can't do it. Corners. What happened to this short corner thing? Was it just again against Burnley? We're going to play the short, you know, against a bigger team who were good good in the air, or you know, Chelsea are quite good in the, good in the air from what I've seen previously. So uh, this short corner thing we were doing all at Burnley, all right, we only had a few corners. We only had um, seven. Well, we had seven corners, but I think every single one was a cross into the box, and it resulted in sod all, which which it did all last season. But you know, we thought, oh yeah, we'll start playing it. We'll start playing it from the corner, like like we did uh, against Burnley. You know, no. Absolutely, I don't know. I don't know. Who makes these decisions? Obviously, I have no idea. Surely the best thing is to take the short corners and keep hold of the ball. I just beyond me. Pep, yeah, he was a bit. He was. I think that when we were one nil down, it was at Lilo and seemed very animated talking to him. He seemed very down, sat there on the on the side, didn't he? he didn't not much in his technical box. Uh, I think Pep's got a lot on his mind. Um, I think we've got a lot on our mind. and I mean, I, I only think things can probably get worse at the moment, but I'm more on that in when I do my previews of forward games. And obviously we can talk about our City go forward for next season, etc., can't we? But yeah, Pep, Pep didn't look overly up for it last night, to be honest with you. Lots of it uh, certainly must be unhappy with the way we played. Chelsea, yeah, all credit to him. I thought uh, I had us down for a 2-1 win on the betting, but I did say both teams to score would seemed a good bet, so that came off. But uh, I did say it could be a draw or a Chelsea win, but because uh, Chelsea are a good team and we do struggle. We have struggled against good teams, certainly away from home this season. You know, teams that can hit us on the break because our defence is absolute crap, to be honest with you. It's, it's dreadful. I mean, that... It's needed sorted out, but we've got away with it, haven't we? Because we were so so good going forward. But uh, games like last night, when it comes home to roost, really. Anyway, that's it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, Chelsea two, City nil. Very disappointing. Uh, Liverpool win the title. 
well done to them. I see City twit, uh, tweeted congratulations and a few people commented that they didn't do that to us last season, but they were, were bigger than that anyway. So and I, feel, I see there were Liverpool fans turn up to Stamford Bridge last night after the game and Liverpool fans outside Anfield last night. But yeah, you can't blame them, can you? I, mean, I know, I know, this, you know, they're just like the people on Bournemouth Beach. Obviously, they got more, more. Uh, I don't know where the brains are, but uh, you, you can't blame them. Bloody hell, they've wait, waited 30 years, haven't they? I mean, some of these guys, 30 years, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it, this thing? So, so no doubt, but, you know, the media will, will get uh, inundated with it. But, hey, congratulations to him, they won it. And I saw Mr Milner in an interview today, so I think he's been feeling quite happy with himself, so. Yeah, well done, well done, Liverpool. Anyway, we we just let's be honest about well, it. We just weren't good enough. It was a season too far for us this season, wasn't it? After two wonderful seasons, and hey, we're still we've got a trophy and we're still in another two. So let's go again. We can go again, can't we? Anyway, please look out for uh, a couple of things coming up. Follow me on Twitter at the. I'll shove the things on the screen and please uh, check out my little website where I, I, I sell old and rare DVDs, movie posters. And the board game, so if you can find a couple of minutes, thumbs up to you on there. Please leave us a thumbs up as well. If you're still with me watching this, please leave me a thumbs up. It's nice to get views, nice to get thumbs up. Yeah, and coming soon on the 20th, uh, Saturday, that's tomorrow, that's, uh, yeah, tomorrow as I'm doing this, uh, the 27th, I've got a little Mike Doyle special based around his testimony, a little bit of Mike Doyle, uh, City, one of my City past vlogs, moments moments in time. Uh, obviously tomorrow I'll have the Newcastle uh, We'll have the Newcastle preview of the Newcastle game. That'll be out tomorrow. Uh, we'll also have on Monday, obviously, a look back at the Newcastle game, the quarterfinal of the FA Cup. And on the 30th of June, uh, don't don't turn off particularly, but just a little thing on when Alan Ball came. All the the on the 30th of June he arrived, and obviously just a, a little little uh, vlog on again City past on on Alan Ball's arrival and some some things and using newspaper clippings what happened uh, around that time as well. So don't dismiss dismiss it out of touch. It's our history, isn't it? Whether it's good or bad, it's still part of our history. It's interesting. It's interesting to see what people say at the time, etc., about these arrivals. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Please. Where are we going to do the rest of Have a great one. Please, let's all, let's all be happy. Let's be back cheering them on, on you know, in our seat, on our couches, etc. On, on Sunday at Newcastle. And we'll be all right, won't we? We'll be all right. We're still having a good season. One trophy won. One trophy in the cabinet. Still another two we're going for. I mean, Liverpool give up, give up on a couple of trophies, didn't they? So they could concentrate on the league. So there you go. Class. See, that's us. Class. Yeah, not so, not so classy last night, unfortunately. Anyway, thanks for watching. We're going to do the rest of the day. Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. Let's all look after each other. This is Bird. Till we meet again. Saying goodbye for now. Bye-bye.